Hello everybody! Today we're going to take a quick look at The Flash. This is the latest entry in the DCU, directed by Anthony Muschietti and starring Ezra Miller, Sasha Kaye, and Michael Keaton. One day, Barry Allen is running a little bit faster than usual and accidentally discovers the secret of time travel. Like you do. And despite warnings from Bruce Wayne, he goes back in time and prevents his mother's death. Back in the present day, or close to it, he was off by a few years. Nora Allen is alive, Henry Allen is not in jail for her murder, and all is right with the world. Until General Zod shows up and everything goes to hell. Turns out that one little change caused a ripple effect that somehow created a world without metahumans, and thus they were powerless to stop General Zod. It also turned Ben Affleck into Michael Keaton. Somehow. I enjoyed this one, it actually hooked me pretty quickly with that title card fake-out joke at the beginning, I thought that was a nice touch. And while I did enjoy it, I don't know if I would necessarily call it a good movie. It's kind of a mess. And the main reason why it's a mess is so much of the time travel plot just does not make sense. For example, the Batman. After Barry makes his change, he becomes a completely different person and is somehow 20 years older. How does that work? This made a bit more sense in the Flashpoint comics that the movie is loosely based on, because in that version of the story, Batman was Thomas Wayne instead of Bruce, which is why he was older. That made much more sense. But Michael Keaton is not playing Thomas Wayne, he's playing the same Bruce Wayne he played in the Tim Burton movies. I am happy to see Keaton playing Batman again, I enjoyed seeing him kick ass in this movie, I liked hearing the Danny Elfman theme again, but it made no sense at all. And somehow this version of Batman is an expert in time travel and the multiverse, which is never explained. I understand the concept of the butterfly effect, but that can only move in one direction. Changing something in the future cannot affect the past. That doesn't work. I understand that this is a very complex plot, but that's not really an excuse. Across the Spider-Verse had a very complex plot involving multiverses and multiple timelines, but they still found a way to make it make sense. For The Flash, it feels like they didn't even try. Fan service was priority number one. The end of the movie makes that very clear. Another thing working against this movie, the visual effects are downright crap in places. And this happens right out the gate. One of the very first things we see is Batman and The Flash teaming up to stop a robbery gone wrong, which somehow results in an entire wing of Gotham Hospital collapsing. And at the very top of that wing just happens to be the newborn nursery, and we see, I think, nine different babies go flying out the window, along with a nurse who happened to be in the room at the time, and a therapy dog. And the Flash has to run up all these bits of falling debris, stopping to grab a snack at a falling vending machine, because when you're a speedster you burn a lot of calories, and he has to very carefully save all of the babies, and the nurse, and the dog, while being very careful not to move them any more than he has to, because when you're not a speedster, and something moves you at Flash speeds, it does not work well on the stomach. And at first, I was like, yes, I am all in. This is exactly the kind of insanity I am here for. Bring it. But then I saw those CGI babies. Ooh, no. Oh, no. Once I got a look at that uncanny valley bullshit, I'm like, you know what, Barry, you can just let the babies die. That's right, I said The Flash should let the babies die, and I do not apologize for that. It's remarkable how hit and miss the visual effects are. Some of it looks pretty good. The time dome that Barry ends up in whenever he's traveling through time looked really good. The effects when Supergirl and The Flash are zooming around all over the place, great. But some of those effects, especially the faces, I don't know what it is about faces, but DC just cannot draw those. Part of the problem may be that there are a lot of special effects in this movie that just really did not need to be there. There's one moment where we see Barry phase through a wall and you actually zoom in and see every single one of his molecules passing through the wall's molecules and like, I really didn't need to see that to understand what's going on, and it wasn't even that cool an effect anyway. There's also, without giving too much away, a very CGI-heavy final sequence that really just went on for entirely too long. And again, faces just... Ugh. And if they eliminated some of the effects that they really didn't need and gave the artist more time to focus on the stuff that was actually important to the movie, it might have turned out better. 
Also, this is a minor complaint, but Barry looks really weird when he runs. I'm not really sure how to explain it, but something about the movement of his arms as he's running just does not look natural at all. Now, all that said, there is a lot of good stuff happening here. Miller genuinely turns in a very good performance as multiple versions of Barry and cannot be easy acting against yourself, but Miller pulls it off. The action sequences are pretty well done overall. It was great to see both Batman kicking ass as well as Kara. Speaking of, I really liked Sasha Kaye as Supergirl. She has definitely had a very different experience on Earth compared to her cousin Cal. Understandably is much more angry and bitter because of it, but there's still a good heart underneath. And there's a really cool shot where they finally rescue her from that Soviet facility and bring her out into the sun, and she's just lying there motionless on the ground, but as the camera starts to pan away from her, you see the color slowly start to return to her hand, and you're like, oh, this gonna be good. And it was. And there are some genuinely touching moments in the movie as well, especially at the very end with Barry and Nora. They nailed that scene. And the comedic moments landed as well. I mentioned the title card fake out. There's another joke early on involving Wonder Woman's Lasso of Truth that I thought was pretty funny. And I like the overall message about not trying to live in the past. Although, considering how heavy this movie is leaning on nostalgia, especially with Keaton, I'm not sure that message came across as well as it could have. So overall, it didn't make a whole lot of sense. The visual effects definitely needed some work. But I can't say I didn't have fun. I'm sure a lot of people don't want to see this movie because of either superhero fatigue or because you're just tired of Miller's antics, and I can understand that. They seriously need some help, and I hope they get it. But if you do want to see the movie, I don't know if it's necessarily worth full price, but it's worth a matinee. And stick around for the post credit sequence. It's not revealing any future plans or anything, but it is a funny moment. And that's all I have to say about The Flash. Till next time, take care.